Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. And back here in New If you watched my last video, you knew I got some things I need to address before I disconnect the battery. Some convertible tops coming off today. Don't know what it's going to involve. The hydraulic pump is in the trunk up underneath, so I'm going to have to get the trunk cleaned out to get it that. I'm just going to wing it and start tearing it apart. Yeah, I got the windows down. There is the top part way up. I'm not sure how this front leading edge attaches. Next thing, all these screws hold this trim on, and I'm guessing that's what holds the back part of the window on too. A little screw there. One screw here that's stripped out. We'll have to fix all that. You gotta tow it out. I'll keep all this trim together, all the hardware together, because all that guaranteed I'm not going to remember where this stuff goes when it comes time to reassemble it. One piece of trim. Looks like I was right, there's another sheet metal piece here that looks like it actually attaches the top. But either way, that is what's actually holding the material on there. Looks like that also holds where a normal car would have a package tray in the back window for speakers and what have you. This just has a piece of vinyl that loops down. When the top's folded up, it all fits down in the trough. Looks like that also holds that in place too. Which mine's pretty rotten because it's kind of disintegrating just trying to take it apart. But it's good to know how that part goes anyway. And the heater's come back on, so I'll go ahead and get the rest of this trim off. And I'll bring it back. A couple more things worth noting. One, this galvanized trim piece. It's one piece that goes all the way across the back, but holds the top on. And this other piece that I don't know what it's even called. We call it package liner or tray liner, I don't know what it's called. But these outer chrome thread pieces actually slide over that to go back on and then the other two fit obviously. But I'm just documenting this for my own sake. That'd be fun putting it back together, figuring out which screws go into which half. Might be a few new words getting invented there. But peeling this top up, I think these back windows are replaceable. It's a Velcro along the sides, and then there's a zipper up in there. So I imagine in the sunshine, these are going to turn yellow and basically disintegrate with time. Uh, this part is still held in down inside somewhere. I have a feeling I'm going to have to open this top up more to get it off. But for now I'm getting all this loose. This liner is deteriorating just like I thought. And I'm guessing this is probably the original to the car. Because the car has been repainted at some point and there's overspray on this material. But there's also a couple things. There's some kind of adhesive holding that in too. I don't know if that's to aid an assembly or just for weatherproofing. But anyway, well there's only one left here. The other corner had a couple more. Right where this window comes down on this Velcro 
They're almost like nails. They're a little spiral. The other side I actually took in that regular pry bar and pried them out to get it out. There's only one on this side, but there were two on that side. Oh, never mind. Here's, here's the remains of the third one. The head's gone off of this one. But it is still there. But they're the kind of... I don't know what they're called. You usually see them holding that little shield on the bottom of an intake manifold too. More or less pound them in. It's some type of... It's not technically a rivet. I don't even know what they're called. But anyway, that's what these are here. Yeah, this all peels loose. Chops loose. Still can't get this out. I think I take the back seat out and get the rest of that. Whatever's fastened in that place. There's a cable. There's a strap down inside here with two screws on it that will finish. Getting that off, I think I'll do that so I get some more of it out of the way. Part of my problem is something's holding this on here and I haven't figured out what that is yet. Plus there's a clip, the very front one on this screw, or on this trim. The very first screw on this trim piece on the sides has a clip on it. Everything else goes right through the sheet metal. I don't know why that is. Make note of that for future reference. But first I'm going to get them other two screws out of there. Lower half of the back seat is pretty straightforward. It's got big clips on each side. You just push them back and then lift up and it will release them. That's as simple as that. The bottom half that screw is missing, but there's a Phillips head screw over here. I'm guessing it will be the only thing to hold the bottom half on. Or top half, I should say. I have noticed there's two uh, plugs. Two on each side. The little rubber snap-in plugs. Two are there, two are missing. I don't know why. Two that are missing show up like a nice place for mice to get up and make nests underneath the back seat. Fortunately, that did not happen. And also, keeping my fingers crossed here, I'm not finding any signs of rust in the floor pans yet. Hopefully it stays that way. I've never had the carpet out of here. But underneath still has that factory undercoat a lot of the old bow parts had. It looks like that's all still intact from what I can see underneath. But getting this carpet out will be the true test. Okay. Get the seat out of here. cylinder. I believe I'm going to have to go ahead and get these side panels out too. I'm not sure what these are made out of. They almost feel like fiberglass or something. They incorporate the rear armrest. But the hardware for the top. Yeah, it looks like these are going to have to go too. I think these might be fiberglass, not sure. Then next to the armrest, there's a screw here, a couple down around here, two in back, which I'm also holding what's left of this not in place. But the mechanism for the whole pivot point at the top is behind here. So I'll get these out and then see what we got. Okay, with them side panels out, you can see the cylinders. It's 
dismembered from one side to the other. But you can see some of the linkage for the frame of the top. That's adjustable up and down. I think for the time being I'm going to take a sharpie and trace around that before I take anything apart. If that will change when it goes back together, I really don't know. But so far, so good on what I'm seeing. This floor, I don't know if this is unique to convertibles. It looks like a black tarish. It's kind of tacky. Not sure what that is. But I'm guessing it's helping to prevent rust. Um, back here, this is all loose now. All this too is amazingly rot free. I figured I'd start finding gremlins by now, but so far I haven't found nothing I didn't expect. Like I said, I already had discovered that the trunk was getting bad. And I got that patch panel. But this video is about top, so we're going to keep working on top. We're putting the top up a little further, I finally figured this out. The stainless trim that goes around the edge of all the framework. Piece here, piece here, piece here, and whatever's up there. But underneath the nearly non-existent weather stripping, what's left of the garbage, is some screws. And that is holding this top captive. I assume it's the same thing around this front edge. But it definitely is right here along the sides and back here. So I'm going to get the rest of that yanked out. Then the top should be off and it should be down to just the frame which is my goal for today. So unless something changes, I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, I learned this today. That little trim piece on the end that's held on by screw. Then I don't know what this stuff's made out of, but it just folds over. That's stapled all the way across, about every inch. To uh, some kind of insert that's in that bowl. I can't tell what it is because I haven't got the top off yet. But I'm basically going to have to peel this whole strip off. And then I should be able to peel the top off. The front's all unattached. But these edges, the front edge, basically anywhere it's wrapped on, there's some kind of adhesive used on it. I'm going to have to do my research to figure out what that is. But that's a long ways down the road before the top goes back on. But I want to include this in the video so later on when I'm scratching my head trying to figure out how to put it back together, I can come back and look at this. Okay, in the home stretch, got the top peeled back. Appears as though this is the zipper for the back window. Appears as though that was laid down first. And then I'll approximately seven, eight hundred staples across there. And then this some kind of pad that goes right on the edges of the hoops all the way up. That got stapled on next. And then finally the top. Which you know I, I'm gonna be pulling staples. I'll see you next spring. I may or may not be done by then, I don't know. Somebody's definitely stapler happy. But I'm on the home stretch. Uh, this padding deal is also stapled on every hoop going up. I have to remember that when it comes time to go back together. And for this top mechanism, however that works, this piece is adjustable. Looks like there's a piece down there that might be too. Maybe not, I don't know. And I really don't know if this will go back together the same as it was or not. I was thinking about drilling a small hole in there. So I know where it was when it comes time to put it back together, but that may not matter. I don't know. 
Anyway, this top is finally ready to come off. I'm down to just the adhesive. A few staples down each side yet. A few. <laughs> Hundreds of staples. This top is finally ready to come off. One final piece of the puzzle, this pad. Just glued on there. I don't know what kind of industrial strength adhesive that is. There's also a tiny little screw on each side for each one of these pads. And two rivets, which I just tore out. I guess the final step will be to get the framework out of the way. Okay. If I put it like the top is down, it would be easier to take apart. Looks like there's a pivot pin. This piece must be the main, what everything else is based on. There's a big pin there, and there's some bolts, everything else has bolts off of it. Hopefully I should be able to leave all, all that together. Actually I have to, a lot of that's riveted. But I'll get this out of the way and get stored away. And get to work and turn the rest of the interior out. So actually unless I find something else, the cylinders and pump, I'm just going to leave them lines hooked up if I can. Hopefully I can just unbolt everything and pull it all out if it looks like I can. Because the lines aren't threaded through of anything. It would be a lot less mess if I don't have to unhook the hydraulic lines. It looks like the motor just plugs in. So that will come out. Just well for the convertible top. There's junk, but I'm going to keep it. Maybe use it as a pattern to have one made. I was looking online, they're like 400 bucks in this. There's nothing about this worth 400 bucks. So I might see if I can have one made somewhere cheaper. But unless I run into another surprise, I'm going to end this video right here. Next video, I don't know what I'll be doing. Maybe the interior. I may be back on the motor. Depends on when parts start showing up for that again. So I'm kind of at a standstill. So until parts show up for the motor, I'm going to keep plugging away at this. So stay tuned everybody. Catch you next time.